Oh my goodness, good morning. It's Wendy Johnstone here. I had a technical glitch there, despite being 15 minutes ready ahead of time. Um, welcome. Talk about having my energy not zapped, but my adrenaline going through the ceiling. Um, so, welcome. Uh, Family Caregivers of BC, our live event, and today we are talking about uh, energy zappers. And uh, you'll also be able to find uh, similar information in the Senior Living article that we wrote uh, for December as well. Um, energy zappers, what are they? They're basically uh, this idea of things that drain us. And they can be, you know, mental, physical, emotional. Um, so, you know, for example, uh, physically, we just might be, we might feel drained because we're not sleeping as well as we used to, or we've got joint pain, or uh, caregiving ends up, you know, taking more of our time. And so we're just, we just don't have the, the time to commit to our physical self-care. Um, mental drain just might feel like, we're just not stimulated enough that uh, we don't feel like we get time to read or, um, you know, try new things. Uh, the emotional, you know, drain just might be the heaviness of, you know, where um, the person that we're caring for and where their health is at. Um, so all of these things, uh, you know, they can crop up and, you know, they create this, this, uh, this tension or they just zap us of, you know, wanting to do anything beyond uh, what we're able to do. And, um, I was just doing a little bit of, a little bit of reading this morning, uh, just around all the different, you know, uh, all the different areas of, um, our overall, you know, well-being. And I was thinking about that, uh, in terms of today, in terms of like energy zappers, but also these opportunities for us, uh, to find small ways to, um, you know, be able to provide some of our own, you know, self-care or energy towards our overall well-being. So it, it sort of like the, there's a blessing and a curse. So the energy zappers uh, can zap us, yet if we have a moment to reflect or when we can find a moment to reflect, uh, there's also an opportunity for them uh, to provide insight into ideas around how we can best support ourselves. And we thought this would be a great uh, topic to talk about in our Facebook Live, uh, of course, because we do find uh, that December uh, can be that month where there's just extra activities, there's this extra sense of weight on our shoulders that we should be doing more. Uh, and, you know, with that, um, it can just create some additional pressures and actually more zappers that can drain us. So on our caregiver support line or in our coaching calls, uh, we have a lot of you know conversations around this with family caregivers. And um, one of the best ways that, that we tend to work with family caregivers is just this idea of, of getting curious about what, what zaps our uh, energy. And so I'm going to use an example uh, of a caregiver that you know just recently um, spoke to, and uh, this particular caregiver, you know, was supporting um, a spouse with uh, a chronic illness, and she's also you know has other family around her that may not need uh, her full time attention, but that still you know requires support, uh, and she's also working you know part time. And she's, you know, just having a really hard time in these moments where uh, she wants to do things for herself. She often feels quite drained or she just feels like in some way she can also just feel like she's frozen, like she's not sure what to do. And so one of the things that um, we were discussing in our coaching call was just to be really curious and just to kind of list everything. So what what zaps your energy uh, and and not to worry about uh, not putting limitations on it just just write them and so uh, in her case you know she talked about uh, that sometimes um, 
you know, one of her biggest drains is that she does. She worries uh, about her partner who's at home alone when she's out working part time or when she's out trying to, um, you know, do household, you know, tasks or just be out with a friend. Um, she felt like she could sometimes find this me time, uh, there was time for herself and, you know, these small blocks. And she would either end up just filling it with uh, household tasks or it was just she felt like she had no direction or she wasn't sure how to fill that time. Um, she was also feeling this weight of all of a sudden her role had changed so much. So, and in some ways just having time to uh, reflect on that, to grieve that change. Uh, her husband, uh, her spouse's, you know, physical and mental changes uh, have, you know, really affected her. Um, and then that also turned into just this overwhelm of there's more things on her plate now that she's having to juggle. And so she just was feeling really overwhelmed. Um, so those were, you know, for her, she, you know, though she had listed a whole bunch and those were sort of, you know, ended up being um, the top four or five. And so in our conversations, one of the things that we talk about uh, and what we talked about in this coaching session was this idea of energy conservation. I know some people you talk about this idea of you know balancing caregiving with other responsibilities and and i would say that that perhaps the language that i'm trying to use and i know um, other individuals are using as well is this idea of you know of integration that uh it you know things aren't always balanced and so how do we integrate um you know, living, you know, with caregiving, or how do we integrate our own self care with caregiving, or how do we, etc. Uh, and so this idea of energy conservation comes up quite a bit. And we talk about having, uh, one of the analogies I use is we talk about having, you know, a personal pie. And uh, every day we get a we get a pie, and it's full. And we have to divide that pie up, you know, in various ways. And, but I guess the one, you know, kind of the one key, one key part is that one, one slice of that pie, however, however, you know, thin or however wide, depending on the day it is, uh, is this idea of um, having that pie for ourselves. So in order for us to conserve our energy, you know, we often uh, still need to, you know, fill up the gas tank a bit. We need to make sure that we don't, you know, use up the gas too fast, you know, all in one trip. Um, otherwise, we're going to get stuck somewhere. And so this idea of, you know, filling up our gas tank or filling up our cups and, and energy conservation. And so uh, with this particular caregiver, uh, I think, you know, what, what came up for her is that she understood that sometimes uh, she spent a bit more time thinking about things she couldn't control. And so she identified uh, that even when she was trying to have a piece of the pie for herself, that sometimes these, you know, these little thoughts would come in and they would, they would crowd her self-care time or her, you know, her, her well-being time. And so for her, uh, what, what works for her and what she understands what works for her um, in the past is that if she goes out in the morning for a daily walk um, prior to, you know, all of the various activities that need to start, that it's often a place for her to uh, either think about that, think about those worries, uh, or get out into a nature and doing more of a, a meditative where she's just counting her steps and that, you know, gives her the opportunity to do one or the other depends on her day and for her to understand that that's bookended so for her it's like okay when the walk starts and the walk finishes that's the bookended time for her worry time or her you know meditative time of trying to um let you know let some things go um so that's you know one of the successful strategies um is helpful for her and then the other thing we talked about uh, you know, coming back to this, you know, how do we refill our cup? And sometimes, you know, we can't fill the cup up to the top. And then sometimes we just have to, you know, refill it a little bit. And uh, so one of the things that she, she, um, we did was we just said, well, just write everything out that, that fills your cup. And it took her, you know, less than five minutes. 
and there's no limitations. There's no thinking about, okay, well, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Well, no, just write out what refills your cup because then it gives you a place to start. And so after she looked at uh, her cup, you know, she realized that, of course, she can't do everything on the cup, but that during the days where she does have three or four hours, um, what we talked about was that she didn't need to go and do these errands and that she doesn't, you know, these shoulds and needs, try not to put that on herself and really finding ways to recharge her cup. And so, um, you know, for this individual, uh, it was around um, having three or four activities at the ready, depending on how she felt. And so then she could pick up one of those activities depending on how she was feeling. And she had everything, you know, organized in a box. Uh, and so there's a little bit of pre-planning, uh, but it really helped, you know, going forward um, with her respite. And then she could just choose. Because, uh, I mean, not every day. We don't want to feel like we have a, a prescribed, you know, list of activities that we um, need to do during our respite. We don't want that additional pressure. So it really became about a choice. So um, two things. One is going to be a little exercise at the end of this Facebook Live. But before that, I wanted to talk about some of the, the areas that can drain us. And we've, we've talked a little bit about some of them. But uh, there's, you know practical activities and so those are like the practical day-to-day -day activities that we just have to do uh, to maintain a household and sometimes we can't you know put those off um, I was I was laughing uh, to myself because um, my you know partner and I we had a, a a busy couple of days and it was wonderful it was days off but we ended up you know visiting family and doing all sorts of things and um, we came back and we felt like oh geez we're you know um, we really need to get a few things done around the house. And we thought, oh, we just haven't had one day where you know we could just really enjoy the day. And so we did. And then you know the following day, there was a massive snowstorm. And so we couldn't actually get out and do the household tasks. And we were sort of laughing because you know Wednesday rolled around and we realized you know, we really need to get groceries. Um, and it was great. You know, we were able to work through our freezer, but uh, you know, just not, I mean, <laughs> we both acknowledge we probably just should have done that on Sunday. Um, so we had a little, you know, a laugh about that uh, around, you know, sometimes it's just these practical bits that, that can mount up. And if we don't do them, then you know, they, they can feel overwhelming. Um, I think the emotional, you know, heaviness uh, is also another area or the emotional part that could drain us. Um, I know right now, personally, you know, um, I have a, um, a healthy aging mother in Toronto and there's just been some things going on with her. Uh, nothing too serious, but it's just one, you know, it is this emotional, like, oh, I just can't fly back and see her, and I've got siblings, and that's all wonderful. They're all picking up those activities, but, you know, it's just, it is a thing that I am, you know, aware of, uh, and so sometimes, you know, for other individuals who are having more, um, who are, you know, thick in the thick of caregiving and who are having these day-to-day -day responsibilities, and that it, you know, that emotional drain can wear on us. Uh, I think physically, uh, I think, it, you know, especially this time of year, it can be a little bit harder to get out. Um, it can be a little bit harder to, especially when it's pouring rain. Um, so physically, sometimes we can just suffer a little bit more because, uh, you know, we're just not able to be as active and the days are shorter and it's just, it's a lot harder, um, you know, for that piece. Um, I think we talked about mentally that, uh, you know, mentally it's just this idea of how do we stimulate ourselves mentally intellectually what does that look like for us um, and so sometimes not having that is a bit of a drain uh, because we feel like we're just you know we feel like we can get caught on the hamster wheel um, socially you know so our social connectedness is is really important to us but in some circumstances you know a social connectedness can, can sometimes feel like a drain you know, when, when you want to be social and you want to enjoy it, and then on the flip side, you know, that also can sometimes then impact our ability to um, just have time for ourselves. Um, our social support, you know, how we, how we receive our personal support, um, you know, that's an area uh, that is, you know, more, I think, around our well-being. I would say the lack of, you know, can sometimes feel like things can mount up and we don't have a place to share um, or individuals that we can share our story with or receive support. Um, 
so those are some of the, the areas around, uh, which coincide with, with our overall well-being, um, but which can also create these energy zappers or, or feel that we um, can be drained. So a takeaway exercise for you, and this, this one's actually written out in the senior living uh, column. Um, we also have some other really great exercises uh, or tools. We have a resiliency tool. Uh, that's often um, a really great place just to find out how resilient we're feeling. Um, we have a flip book that's all around how, how do we create our personal support plan. Uh, and there's a couple of really good exercises around identifying what your needs are uh, and then being able to take some actual action steps towards that. Uh, I think that's uh, a wonderful uh, opportunity to... Uh, using conjunction with this exercise. So really the takeaway exercise is this. Um, you can make a list uh, with the title saying my energy zappers. I always find visuals are helpful so I usually draw in lightning bolts um, just uh, you know and that also kind of engages a different part of our brain and write down just everything that zaps your energy. If you want to you can use certain titles like you know you could say what your physical zappers are, your emotional, if that's how your brain works. Um, sometimes it's just good to just get them all down and then you can put them into some categories. Um, and so once you kind of have those written down, um, you can ask yourself just how does it feel to write out these energy zappers? So sometimes, you know, we might feel like, oh, I feel, you know, guilty about writing some of these because X, you know, Y and Z, um, I feel relief that I finally have been able to write out these uh, zappers. Uh, oh, I have a lot more clarity. Oh, I didn't realize that so many things were zapping me. Um, so sometimes even just bringing awareness into the situation is really, really helpful. Um, what did you notice about when you wrote down the zappers? So sometimes there's like a real tangible like, oh, my shoulders dropped a bit. I felt like I had all these things up here in my brain and now they're on a piece of paper. And so at least I feel like, okay, I've been able to you know, write them out. Um, Rereading them, you know, I could feel a little bit of tightness in my chest, especially around, you know, ones that were more emotional. Um, so just bringing awareness uh, is a really good place to start. And then um, if you want to end there, end there. Often that's just a really great first step. If you're feeling as though you have a little more um, space and energy uh, to take a next step is just to look at that list and to ask yourself, you know, what's one step or action I want to take, uh, you know, in the next week. And it can be big or small. The key is, is that asking yourself, okay, you know, how confident am I that I can take this step or, or uh, take this action in the next week. And it's really important that you um, answer seven uh, or higher. If it's lower than seven, it probably means that that action is a bit, um, you might wanna break it down a little bit more uh, so that you feel really confident. Um, and so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna share a, a little personal uh, action that I have taken. And it's been a huge one for me. Um, and although I'm not caregiving um, physically, I am. I am. Um, I do a lot of work with seniors that require uh, a lot of physical and emotional time, and my schedule can be quite full. And I had been noticing that I've been having a lot of body aches and joint pain, and even though I'm, I am able to find activity, I haven't been able to find a place where I've been able to really. Um, lengthen and go into a place where it's a bit more meditative and uh, I have committed to uh, four days of this you know just 30 minutes of yoga every day and I you know if I've signed up and if I can do it live I do it live it's blocked out my calendar but if things happen like today our Facebook live and being here is really important um, then I get a link to the video and I you know I do it um, I make space in my day you know for that and it's been about five weeks now, and it's just been a complete life-changing experience. Um, you know, my joint pain is disappearing, and uh, I'm not feeling as tight as I used to. 
And um, it was a really big lesson. I, I, you know, had been not avoiding it, but just, you know, didn't, didn't feel that I could commit the time uh, that I just didn't have space for it. And I, you know, I, so I broke down the goal really small. I said four days a week, I'm just going to try it for one month and see where I'm at. And at the end of that month, I realized, you know, it's become a bit of a non, it's become a non-negotiable for me because my body, you know, has really benefited. My mind has really benefited, um, you know, from that practice. Now, not everyone is going to have that you know, ability to fit that into their schedule. Um, that was just an example of, you know, an action and a goal and, you know, being really confident um, and making sure that it was a seven. I was like, I can do this for, you know, a month at a seven um, and realize now after I did it for a month that I, I can now do it, you know, indefinitely because uh, it didn't really affect uh, my life, you know, the way I thought it was, uh, you know, prior to committing to it. So, with that, I also just want to show you that I have my, my little festive earrings on today uh, that my daughter um, made many years ago. Um, I was just thinking about that it's December and this is our, our last um, Facebook Live of 2021. And so the next time we see you all, it's going to be 2022. However you celebrate the holidays, uh, however you celebrate the festive season, um, we at Family Caregivers of BC uh, just want to wish you as much joy and laughter and peace uh, for, for the, the, the festive and holiday season. And we will look forward to seeing you in 2022. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.